I said I will bless the Lord at all times, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Top of the morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to morning prayer. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's day is to be prayed. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all glory and power. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we take a moment to reflect on ourselves or thoughts, or words, or deeds, or in actions. Those things that have not been up to standard, God's standard, we bring all before him as we ask for his forgiveness. Lord, Lord we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, 
and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 20 and 21. Psalm 20 May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from his holy place and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. We will sing for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He will answer him out of his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will call upon the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down. But we will arise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the King. And answer us when we call. Psalm 21 The king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. How greatly he exults in your victory. You have given him his heart's desire. You have not denied him the request of his lips. For you meet him with blessings of prosperity and set a crown of fine gold upon his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him. Length of days, forever and ever. His honor is great because of your victory. Splendor and majesty you have bestowed upon him. For you will give him everlasting felicity. And will make him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord. Because of the loving kindness of the Most High, he will not fall. Your hand will lay hold upon all your enemies. Your right hand will seize all those who hate you. You will make them like a fiery furnace. At the time of your appearing, O Lord, you will swallow them up in your wrath and fire shall consume them. You will destroy their offspring from the land, and their descendants from among the peoples of the earth. Though they intend evil against you and devise wicked schemes, yet they shall not prevail. For you will put them to flight, and aim your arrows at them. Be exalted, O Lord, in your might. We will sing and praise your power. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God. Written in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 19 to 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. 
So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has an appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair on their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's plan of salvation. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with all the spiritual blessings of heaven. God chose us in Christ before the world was made to be holy and blameless and to live by his love in his presence. God planned through Jesus Christ to bring us to himself as his children that we might praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved. In Christ, we gain redemption. Through his blood, our sins are forgiven. How rich is the grace of God. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 11 to 18. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was listening to music and 
listening to Caribbean genre. Love is the answer and do some good today. And it's all about the good life with the good vibes. And, and you know, I'm listening to it and I'm just meditating and moved by the constant cry for us to act and live well with each other, the constant cry, cry to walk in righteousness and truth, the constant cry by, you know, through our music, through discussions, through looking at each other and the way we live. It's one thing that, is, that keeps coming out, love. Love is the answer. If we would have love for one another, we would not see our brother or brethren or sistren suffering and not reach out to help. And, you know, I'm, I'm listening and praying and thinking about we are not getting the little things right, the simple things right, that will help us to build our life better. We have a call to love each other, to love God. And in order to love God, we have to love each other. And in loving each other, we're proving to God that we love him. So, you know, that, that's just whole thing just wrapped in one package of love. Understanding love and what love is and what it looks like. Love is our genuine care for each other or trust and actions toward each other that support one another. Even one of the songs I was listening to, you know, he says, if there's one piece of bread, make sure that we break it. I can't speak it in the Jamaican language that it was sung in because it will further destroy it. But, but, you know, just that line there, it's like one piece of bread, break it and share it. And, and we consider how we grew up, a lot of us, not in this time now, might have been a long time, but... While for a small percentage that seemed like poverty and frustration, for many, it taught us to share. It taught us to care. It taught us that we're not to be selfish and just think about ourselves. But even if we have one little piece, it must be divided among everyone so that everybody has enough to sustain. Everybody is moving together. He, you know, the songwriter says, everyone wants to make it and we we forget that in a good light we see it in a selfish sense that we have a lot of competition rather than everyone is struggling or everyone has their moments and we need to support each other and move together there's so many pictures memes um tiktoks and a whole host of other things on social media that show us when we work together when we support each other, how much further we would reach if we, you know, do the opposite by working on our own. And I'm just looking at that in its big picture, its big sense. And so if we would get the little things right, that, that love, that love in action, we would not see someone suffering. <laughs> you know, this week here, the Good Samaritan came to mind. And I, I thought about it because I'm looking at persons on the street as I'm driving by. And yes, I have a habit of picking people up and I drop them, I drop them, you know, especially if, it's, if it is really hot or if it's raining, or I pick up people and I drop them to where they're going um, a lot of the times. And I don't just do it on a whim, but I pray first and ask God, you know, um, what to do and should I? And does this person need my help? And am I the one to help? Now, I'm looking at persons and I'm driving, I'm thinking about something a friend of mine said to me. Um, she said, in this day and age where they're killing and raping and robbing people, I'm not picking anybody up in my car and the next thing they're swelling. And I had a good laugh because I wondered about that same parable about the Good Samaritan. His kind passed him straight. He was, he was beaten and battered and needed help in a drain. And 
his people passed him straight. The ones he was looking to for help, or the one, when I say looking to, I mean who you would think would help him because that's his family, that's his brethren, and they passed him straight. But out of nowhere comes the guy who they've been shunning, the guy who they didn't look to to help because they had that discord, that separation, and they did not interact with each other. He was the one who stopped and helped him. And that was a sure sign of love. And that's what the scripture is telling us. If we would love, we would not see somebody in need and pass them straight. We would not see them needing help and not offer our hand. And so we have to have eyes that look to help or look for care. What is the need? That's what we need to look at. Their need, not our need. And it's not selfish because we, have, we, do, we are not considering what it would cost me. Because when we start counting the cost of it, like, you know, I'm going to, it's going to take me off my part. I'm going to have to clean the car. Um, I don't want to help. I don't want to put out that money. Let them go help themselves. And, and a whole host of other things that come to mind when we think about helping others. I would actually have to listen. I don't have that time. I don't want, I want to spend time by myself. I have other things to do. That sort of thing. You know, we're not acting out love. And, and so... Then the writer reminds us, when Christ came, it was because of God's love. God loved us. He sent his son. God proved his love for us by sending his son. And he says, it's not just about saying you believe or praying, but there's an action that re is required and that action comes in the way we live with each other. That action comes in showing ourselves to trust and obey and love God back. And you're looking at Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the middle of this fire, standing firm and not giving in to other gods, standing firm and not thinking about what the world says that they should do, all the negatives that come down. You know, we are very good at pointing out each other's faults and being negative about everything. And Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego stood their ground. When they were called, and they know they were being set up, right? When they were called to come and worship with the rest of the, the, the kingdom that was worshiping this other God, they said, no, we don't worship that God. That's not our God. And we will not join in. But not in a rude way. They were very respectful. And, you know, we would say in our regular language, of course, the king taking chain up, um, someone egging him on and putting things in his head. You say, you know, look at them. They, you're, you're forcing people. What is the law? You're forcing people to do all of these things. But here you have these three there doing their own thing. And he was so mad. He's like, yes, you are right. And tossed them into the fire. And the fire was so hot. The fire was so hot that the guy who was controlling the fire and putting them in, he, he died. It was just too hot for him. He, he died. But nothing happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they held their ground when it came to their faith in God. When they did not give in to what was being said, they did not turn away from the fight or from the fierce fire that was before them. But it wasn't a matter of trusting God to say, well, he will save me from the fire. But holding their ground to, this is not my God. I don't believe in what you all are talking about. My God is almighty my god is god he's the one and only true god and he will protect me he says trust him and i'm going to trust him i'm not going to give in i'm not going to cave and do what the world says or what everybody else is doing but i'm going to stay the part wherever it takes me and they held strain and god used them to prove to prove to the people there at that time who were looking on because you only saw three people going but yet you are seeing through the fire four persons and they came out on skate not even a singe on a tread of their clothing and so proving that God is alive and real God is right there protecting them if they only held strong and proving to us us that he is real if we would hold strain, if we would trust and obey, if we would not give in to the world and what the world says, if we would do our part, our part, that's the action that is required. 
holding firm to his truth if we would do our part in loving loving him and loving one another if we would do our part we would learn to trust him we would see the greatness that he has in store we cannot want all that god has to offer and not do our part and so there is an action required and when we consider even in our own relationships we require somebody to act we require the other person to prove their love we require the other person to act like they trust we like if we we understand each other we're in that relationship and we're going die hard so if we look at it like that it's the same thing that is required of us and that what and what god wants from us he wants us to reunite with him and that reuniting with him means letting go of all the negatives letting go of all the past letting go of the unforgiveness letting go of all the things that hold us back and acting and living and being free in love and this love this love that we're talking about is our love to each other because again whatever we do to each other we do to him and so we acting in love one to each other builds our trust in god we acting in love and and doing our part helps us to strengthen our faith in god because we see the results of following god's rules we see the results of walking with god that's the results that shadrach meshach and abednego saw trusting and obeying god he was i don't like to use the word he was faithful but i will say it. he was faithful to them as in meaning that he did not abandon them in their time of need he brought them out victorious so he brought them out victorious because they stayed true to what he required and what he required was not to give in to what the world says but to follow what he directed he says stay with him stick with him trust him obey him he is the one and only true god he called them to fast and pray they fasted and prayed he called them to see him and only him as their god that's what they did he is calling us to do the same and to act in love and if we would have love for one another we would have a better world a better society better relationships we would have growth we would be living in a healthier life less stress better relationships more community my brothers and sisters in Christ the urgent action that is required of us is for act is for us to act selflessly is for us to put others needs before our own it is for us to care for each other it is for us to respond in love that love for god and that love for one another that love for god expressed and exercised through our love for one another and that love for each other expressed in attending to each other's needs and caring let us care some more amen When we walk with the Lord and the light of his word what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will he abides with us still and with all who But it's blessed if we trust.
trust and obey. Just trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Thank you, but to trust and obey. Thank you, Jesus. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows all for those who will trust and Let us confirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O oh Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established a new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they possess by their, profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, the lover of unity and the author of peace, to know you is eternal life serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all the assaults of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary. To Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us to offer our own petitions at this time.
Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray you, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a wonderful week, everyone.